In Florida, last year, following the aftermath of an extreme cold front, I had an opportunity to explore the beach at Passagrill, just south of St. Pete Beach. Perhaps you've seen that episode on this channel. Look at this! <laughs> While the abrupt drop in temperature unfortunately caused many mollusks and other sea creatures to perish, I had never seen so many shells wash up at this location before. I filmed quite a bit of content at a few locations across a few days during this cold front. So on today's adventure, I'll be sharing even more from that experience. Get your shell bags ready. Let's go. Good morning, y'all. Today we're at Anna Maria Island. It's daybreak and we're gonna go find some shells. Let's go. This is so beautiful. I know it's really dark and you probably can't see well. We're at Bean Point, which is at the northern end of Anna Maria Island. The tide is going out. It has been very cold here in Florida. And those, that cold weather, the cold fronts have really pushed a lot of shells onto shore. So we're gonna see what's here. Beautiful white sand beach. This place is known for its beautiful beaches and clear turquoise water. And the north end here, where I'm at, is the south end of the mouth of Tampa Bay, which we should be able to get a view of once the sun comes up. Start our day with a beautiful gray colored calico scallop. Very beautiful. There is a considerable amount of drift. Um, So it is pretty quiet in terms of shelling down here. So I've got a couple other spots I'm gonna check in this in this area, and when we get there, uh, I will update you. All right, let's go. Good morning. It is uh, pretty chilly this morning. Not as cold as it has been. Maybe 45 degrees. Still cold for Florida though. This is what I'm used to in Maine. We are on Anna Maria Island this morning on Coquina Beach. All right, so we are down here. We're gonna check the drift lines to see if the high tide left anything here. Uh, there are some other shellers on the beach over here. I presume there are shellers, but we can all share the beach. There's a nice little pile over here. So I don't know if this one has been freshly renewed by the tide, by last night's tide. I'm not sure. I'm gonna get some uh, get this pause here. Sorry, spiny jewel boxes. Beautiful little bivalves. I always try to look in nooks and crannies because sometimes you can find stuff. Not all the time. Look at those beautiful barnacles. And a beautiful golf. Good morning. Oh, look at this beautiful spiny jewel box. That has got to be one of the most beautiful ones that I've found of this species. Look at the red, pink tip, and the spines on that. It's 
gorgeous. Yet another gorgeous spiny jewel box. Oh my gosh. So pretty. Woohoo. That is a fantastic specimen. Really, really nice. Look at the colored tip there. Beautiful American auger. All right, we got a couple little olives here. One there, and one here. It's always fun finding these little gastropods. Very beautiful. Beautiful little hinged calico clam so that's a sweet find very nice this is particularly pretty all right this is a neat find it is only a piece but that's a strawberry atlantic cockle I'll leave it back because I have a few whole. Ah, I'll keep it. It's nice. All right, I'm approaching the end of the island here, the south end of Anna Marie Island, and there is a little bit of drift, so we're gonna scout through this and see what we can find. Just scout up here. Oh my gosh! I don't know what kind of scallop that is. That is beautiful, though. Look at the spines on this. Gorgeous. Oh. It's the queen of spiny jewel boxes right there. All right. We're at the end of Anna Maria Island here. Uh, really kind of a, sort of a slow day of shelling here in the morning. We've got some beautiful uh, spiny jewel boxes with some really great points. We've got a couple lettered olives, an auger, a really cool lettered olive that has obviously been sitting in some sediment for a while. Calico clam, a calico scallop, a venus, a coquina clam, another calico clam, a rough scallop. Uh, and this scallop here, I'm not sure what type of scallop is. It is, however... My intuition tells me that it is probably a wedding shell, considering uh, I do not recognize this as a Southwest Florida shell. Still cool finds nonetheless. Uh, we are going to go check out another spot. The morning is still very young, so I will see you shortly. I realized I closed out that video without explaining what a wedding shell is. Um, a wedding shell is a shell that you would, it's a term used to describe a shell that you find on the beach. Um, it can be anywhere, but typically that term is used um, synonymously with shelling in Florida, where um, a shell from either a craft store or purchased in a, um, in a, a bin of shells that are used in like wedding ceremonies. Typically, at the end of those ceremonies, um, people will just throw the shells back on the beach. And often those shells come from areas in like the South Pacific um, or Indo-Pacific regions. And so they are not native to Florida. Um, but they wash around in the ocean like the other shells do. And they wash up uh, on shore here. And some of them look pretty exotic. But if you know your Florida seashells, pretty well which one and by Florida seashells I mean the ones that are native to Florida um, you'll begin to recognize any shells that you find that don't organically occur uh, in Florida and so many times if you find a wedding shell quote unquote it's a shell that um, is not native to Florida and that scallop that I found um, I do not think it is native to Florida I could be wrong I'm gonna look it up but I'm pretty sure uh, it is a wedding shell and so the wedding shell means that that's not the name of the shell I don't know the species but wedding shell means it's just not from Florida 
Um, so that's what we mean when we say wedding shell. All right, we are at one of my favorite places here, Pass Grill. So we're gonna do part two of our shelling today here. So let's get to it. All right, are these live? Yes, they're live. Ooh, we got a we got a not live tulip here. That's good. Uh, couple shells here. So that's live. This fighting pump. Nice. Seems like there's quite a few tulips here. And they're most likely all alive. Yep. We will leave them be. And keep looking for our great shells. This guy over here. Almost all white. And then interesting looking little lettered olive. I'll keep that one. That's kind of cool too. Ooh, I don't want my feet to get wet. So it is low tide right now, but the tide is coming in, so we are going to lose access to all of this beach here soon. So we will try to find as many shells as we can in the limited amount of time that we have here. And not before we find a beautiful calico scale. Nice. So there's been a lot of cold weather this week, and you know, a lot of stuff has washed up which is cool because it means that, uh, you know, there's a lot of shells that uh, we can find. If we look closely, unfortunately, there's a lot of specimens that have been beached. Um, but there's quite a few that, um, that are keepers, so they don't have a, an organism, organism inside. Look at the color of this fighting cod. That's like almost red. And no one's home. Look at that. Holy crap, I've ever seen them like that. Got a little lightning welcome, well, nice. Look at all this, I think these are all deceased. They all have creatures in them, but I think they're all expired, they were stranded by the tide. That's crazy. All right, taking a look in the rocks here. And it does look like there's quite a few tulips that are stranded here. Oh, there's so many that are stranded. This is, no one's home in this one. Let's take a look here, Let's see if we can find anything. Ooh, that's a kind of a live cockle, but it's been crushed. Yeah, so there's quite a few things that, look at that fighting conch. That is gorgeous. I'm a sucker for these, even though they're pretty heavy. They weigh your bag down. They're still very beautiful. Let's see. Anything else? Let's see. Okay. A little tulip muscle. Hold on to that. That's beautiful. Oh, I can't hold on to it. And no one's home. It's a keeper. Another banded tulip. <laughs> so many and there are some keepers so this one doesn't have anybody home either oh, that's a nice one in there anybody home here no it's got a nice rock wedged in there though look at that three beautiful little banded tulips that are keepers and we can take a look here ah i see a little you see this stuff look at this what you can find Beautiful horse conch. Look at that. Oh man, that is gorgeous. I do see a tulip up there that I think I might want. If it's no one home. Yep, no one home. I am gonna squeak in here because there's a little area where there are quite a few shells. And I want to see if there's anything hidden. 
Look at all this in here. This is all from really high tide wave action and a recent cold front that came through. So, okay, we can see right here. You guys see that? Right there. That is called a baby's ear. Okay, I'm gonna check this area here. Again, you know, forewarning you, there's a lot of beached uh, tulips here. The tide is coming in though, so it should cover these guys up. Let's see what we can find here. So we got a little juvenile fighting conch. And another one here. Beautiful specimens. Oh, guys, look at this. You see that right in front of me? Beautiful little Florida cone. Oh, man. That is nice. A little honey hole here. Let's see what else we got. Beautiful stuff. Okay, we got some. I don't want to drop the Florida cone. Got another banded tulip. These guys are empty. And in really nice quality, or I should say in nice condition. So that's good. Let's see if there's anything else. I do see tons of stuff under this. Here. Got a nice little auger. Just in two minutes here. Alright y'all, we can explore and look through these pen shells. Again, this isn't this isn't normal for this area. Uh, this is after a storm, so uh, and a cold front. Beautiful little lightning rod there. Look at that. Florida fighting combat is a beauty. That's a juvenile. No one's home, so we can hang on to it. And just kind of looking through. And if there's anything fun. And I just found another little horse conk. So again, just chilling right there. <laughs> cool stuff. The cool things right here. So we have a cantharis. That's a nice one. Sorry about the movement. And right underneath it, I can get, ah, oh, it's busted. A little crown conk. Not pretty though. I might keep that. Nice finds. I like that. Can't miss. It's really nice. So I am down on Pasta Grill here. It's relatively quiet. I'm gonna go look over in the drift line by the water over there. Tide's pushing some stuff in. Let's go check that out. Gorgeous. Little juvenile. Fighting cock. Just a little bit of olive here. It's a nice find. So this drift line looks a little bit aged here, but we can scope through and see if we find anything. If not, those piles in the in the rocks were providing some good stuff. Beautiful. Really. searching in this high high tide line pile of drift gorgeous little it's very old but it's still pretty nicely shaped that is an apple murex it's got a lot of character definitely hold on to that one so i think a lot of people wonder what the best place to shell and uh, West Central Florida is, and I think ultimately uh, many would agree that Paso Grill is, is one of those spots for sure, just because so much stuff walks, washes up here. Um, you know, the, uh, the bay area here is conducive to shells washing up, and you know, they do with consistency. Beautiful fighting conch. 
And what I mean is just like at the jetty rocks here when there's a storm, you can you can literally shell for hours digging through some of these piles, especially after a fresh storm like there just was. It's amazing. A couple cool things here. If you can see right there, so I just pushed some shell pushed some shells aside and found a beautiful little apple murex and a little juvenile fighting conch right in the rack there. Right at the start of the shell pile. Cool stuff. What do you think, y'all? That's gonna be whole? Oh, almost whole pear whelk. The top of one, but it is not whole. Wow, so close. So close, y'all. Yeah, it helps to grab one of these cockles. And sort through like that. It's easier to push stuff aside. Then by using your hands, your hands alone, I should say, the little shark eye here, shark eye moon. There we go. Oh, I dropped my cockle. I'm on the gulf side here. Um, so we're gonna see if any shells have washed up. So we'll check out these piles here. There's some here, and then there's some over by the side of the jetty. Uh, this is a pretty fresh storm, so I anticipate there might be some things in some of these piles. But we'll take a look. Nice little... Right off the bat, and it's hinged. Alright, I will leave the camera running for a couple minutes here. It's juvenile fighting cone with the pink tip. Man, that is gorgeous. Nice little gorgeous deep colored apple murex. And then right next to it is a gorgeous, absolutely beautiful banded tulip with no one home. Look at that. Let's see if I can get it better. Oh, there is a slipper shell on it, so I'm going to leave that. But no fear, because we have another one right here. All right, so we've explored the beach side here at Passa Grill. I'm gonna go back over to the bay side and uh, give it one last look through in those rocks and down along the bay there uh, to see if the incoming tide has washed anything new since we've been looking at these other spots. So let's go check it out.
All right, I'm just looking in here and I literally just found another gorgeous Florida cone. Oh, I just saw a, a little apple murex. I'm not gonna keep that though. Oh, under here, I don't know if you can see. There's a lightning well. Now, no one is home, that is sand. So we can keep that. That's in good condition. All right. It is. Uh, I'm gonna close out the day here at Passa Grill. So we explored the bay side. We explored uh, the Gulf side. Uh, walked along the shorelines. Dug in through some uh, some of the rocks in the jetty. Found some cool things. And now we will uh, take a look at some of our finds. Let's check it out. Now some of these are from Anna Maria Island this morning. We are down there. So we already took a look at those. So I will just focus on what we found here at, uh, at Passer Grill. All right, really cool stuff. So we got some calico scallops here, some gorgeous ones. This Florida horsecock was one of my favorite finds of the day. Obviously really cool to find one of those empty. Uh, I think this fighting conch, I just really like the aperture. I try to only collect those if they have a particular colored aperture that's awesome. Uh, quite a few, excuse me, <clears throat> banded tulips on the shore today. Uh, a lot of them are live, unfortunately. Uh, so we got a mussel there. We got a knobless uh, fighting conch there. Got a little apple murex. Got a couple of those. Another really nice uh, fighting conch. Of course, we got some lettered olives. That's from this morning, and I was surprised to find two uh, Florida cones in the rocks there. Uh, cones are kind of hard to find, especially in uh, central west Florida. So those were fun finds. Uh, this particular fighting conch had like a purple hue to it. May have been a one with a purple lip at some point. It's cool. We got a brill brilliantly colored uh, prickly cockle there. Got some fun lightning whelks. That one's got a little bit of yellow to it. This juvenile fighting conch was interesting because it has like a pink top, you can see. So I thought that that was worthy of grabbing. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So we uh, we explored down uh, to um, Anna Maria Island this morning. Shelling was a little bit slow down there, uh, albeit very enjoyable. Uh, took a nice stroll on the beach. And then we came over to Paso Grill here, and uh, it's been really cold, so there's a lot of shells that washed up here. So with that said, thank you for coming along on this adventure. If you like my content, please hit that like button and consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one.